two different designs for your, your uh, side of the threadboard. Okay? This one we'll talk about in a second. This one's really easy to learn about. This one's a little more hard. When you look at these, you can see that these have like little wings on them. Don't break them open. You know, they kind of break like a, what is it, twigs? That breaks like this. All right. So these little, these little wings that are here are where we're going to put the power. Okay. So um, what you have to know is, this is all I want you to really remember about these things is that these wings on the side, they actually are all connected in a row going from top to bottom. Okay. So if I put in, if I take this wire right here and plug it in, okay, you can push that little wire in there. That means that this wire is now connected to all of the little other poles that are down here. So if I take this wire and plug it in below it somewhere, it means that these are actually connected. Does that make sense? Now the ones in the middle are connected horizontally. So if you line them up that way, they're connected. Now, every, each one of these, both of these have this little trough in the middle. Now, nothing's connected through there, and that's why you use that to put in your integrated circuit. So that all the little legs on this little caterpillar looking thing are on one side, and then the legs are on the other. And they're, they're not touching. But if I want to, I can, let's say if I wanted to connect pin 2 to pin 5, you can just do something like that. Okay. Let's not worry about that just yet. Okay, I'm going to get where I stole this from. Now this one doesn't have the little wings on it. So what's important to remember here is that uh, this one's only, everything's going to be connected horizontally. And when we connect power to it, we're just going to run power down to the bottom here. So here's our power source. Here's a, a little solar panel. If you guys haven't seen these solar panels, these are really cool. They're really expensive, so we're trying to be nice with them. But they're really cool because they're bendable, right? which is amazing that solar panels can do this now. So if we want to do this for power, we can plug it in like that. And now you can take, if you want to take power from that, typically all of the devices that I've built like this, the colored side is going to be positive, and the white or black side is going to be negative. So something to keep in mind. All right, so if we want to take that power and run it down to our, our IC, you would do something like that. So you take the, you basically just connect it to the same little row that your power comes in, and then you bring it down. Okay? Yeah. So that's how these work. We've got a lot more to talk about, but that's just the essential parts of these printed circuit boards. Okay. So this is our 555 chip. So everybody should see on here that we've got a little 555 circuit on the middle of the board. Okay. And the 555 circuit, it looks like this. Does everybody see the little notch? Some of them might not have a notch. If they don't have a notch, they'll have a little circle on the top. Everybody see what that is on these? Yep. Yeah. This has four connectors. So these are like the little legs that come off to the side. And here's the important part. Here's how they're numbered. At the very top, the first one over here is one. directly across to the 8. So the way that that compares to our schematic is that these are all labeled. Now unfortunately when people do schematics, very rarely does it actually look here the way it's going to look like here or here. Okay? You get over it. I know we're all visual people, we're artists, and we want to we see it, we build it, right? We're, we're all very good at that, that's why we're here. However, these are engineers that did this, and they don't necessarily work the way that we do. So I want to point out a few things. Even though number one on your board is up here, number one on this is actually down here. Okay. Another thing about electronics is that when two wires cross like this, you would think they're touching. Typically they're not. When wires actually touch or connected, they'll do this. That means they're connected. And anybody who's really good at electronics and really cares about people using their stuff, when things aren't connected but they cross, they usually do that, meaning they're not touching. 
But typically these two mean that they're not touching and that means they are touching. Sometimes somebody will give you a schematic like this and it is meant that they're supposed to be touching. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't do my schematics that way. All right. So this schematic, I've, I've done it really clearly, I think, to show you that, uh, that these things are all going to touch at these locations. So uh, what should I tell you first? Well, before we get to put this together, let's talk about what all these symbols mean. So we need to get some resistors and capacitors out amongst you. So we've got, I just pull this off the table. So that <laughs> I mean, there's two up here. If somebody wants to, here's some. Pull up a chair. Last time I played with this, I started with the first. your electronics kids at home that you know your stereo system or something you should know we we should probably talk at some point about safety right you guys are all aware that even though this won't kill you then most electronics probably will you don't know what you're doing so you think oh you know i this was this guy he shouldn't be able to do it i'm not going to die and then you do something crazy and i get blamed for it you know, let's try not to do that all right so these are our resistors now, what do you think a resistor does? It resists. It resists, right? It stops the flow of something. So, the way that you should, the easiest way to think about electron, electricity is like flowing water, and you're just sort of flowing water through a system, right? And now, any of you know that uh, uh, with water, you can uh, you can get a, a smaller pipe, and a smaller pipe will provide more resistance. It'll be harder for the water to flow through. So, essentially, that's what a resistor is. It's a smaller pipe. And the reason that you need, a resistor is most commonly protect your equipment. That's what they're used for. They do a lot of different things. But one of the things that they do is they protect your equipment from getting too large of a voltage that might destroy the equipment or kill you, yeah. Um, resistors don't do a great job of saving your life, though. Um, but I suppose they could some degree. So a resistor is going to be this little zigzag, okay? And we're actually going to use two types of resistors. You have a little yellow box. These are also resistors here. And I've also got a bag somewhere, I don't know where I put it, I can go find it, uh, of a another a third type of resistor. So most of you have probably seen these or used these. You probably use these every day. These are called POTS, potentiometers. So every time you turn a dial, if you're over there on your on your volume at home, and, and the TVs don't have round dials anymore, but if you ever use a round dial on your stereo system, it's a potentiometer inside that's changing the resistance of the voltage going through that's going to raise or lower the volume of your system. Okay, So that's what this does. And uh, we've got two different kinds of resistors. Right here is a typical resistor. That's one of these little guys. And then this is a variable resistor, which is this potentiometer. Okay. So we don't have to worry about the technical aspects of it just yet. Um, what this is showing us, though, is that this resistor it has to be 1K, 1 kilo ohm, and I'm not going to make you memorize the color codes on these because I don't even have them mesmerized yet. I've got a, we've got codes on the door or something for some of our students to play with these things. Uh, but you'll see on here that it's got a brown, a black, and a red, and a gold color on this. And those all stand for numbers. So the brown stands for 1. The black stands for zero, and the red stands for two. So when you line those up, it's a one, a zero, and then two, which essentially just means hundreds. So you put two more zeros after it, you get a thousand. Okay? And the gold is for tolerance. Right, let that go over your head. Just let it go. Let it go over your head. You don't have to worry about it. But I'd feel bad if I didn't at least tell it to you. 
Okay. And then these, these resistors, these potentiometers, they actually have on the back here, they have a sticker that says the amount of resistance. Okay. So, go ahead and pass those out. We're going to take one of those. All right. So, we've got through that. Now, here's the fun part. Here's where we get to actually change stuff up. This is our capacitor. We've got a whole bunch of capacitors. Let me see what we've got for capacitors. Was that? Yeah. Some you guys were having fun. Yeah, one resistor. Actually, you know, can you guys pass out these resistors and just take one of them? They're on this like little machine gun kind of belt here. So everybody gets a resistor too. All right. So here we have capacitors. I love capacitors. I don't really fully understand how they work. I'll tell you right now. They, they're a mystery to me, and I love things that are mysteries. I mean, I kind of understand how they work, but I kind of get it. It's, it's still very mysterious. Capacitors are like batteries. They even look a little bit like batteries. But they operate differently. Batteries store charges for as long as possible, right? I mean, you want them to last a long time, and they hold their charge. Capacitors kind of work differently. They, they fill up, they hold their charge, and as soon as they get full, they empty out. The best way to know about how a capacitor works, the best example of a capacitor, is if you've ever used a camera, right? A digital camera with a flash on it. You know, you switch it on a flash. Have you ever heard of the camera? Sometimes it goes And it's through a really high pitch that you can't hear anymore. And then the little light comes on, it's ready to flash, and you click it and it flashes. Okay, that sound that you hear, that's the capacitor filling up with energy. Yeah. Here's the problem with capacitors. They can fill up with a lot of energy, like a full ferret. Okay? You open up one of those devices, and then, you know, you zap, they'll get you, okay? So you gotta be really careful. These are the things that kill you. These are the things that kill you. So if you open up your television set at home, and it says on the television, as you're opening it up, it says, no user service parts inside. You've all seen that? And you do it anyway? You think, hey, I unplugged it from the wall. There's, you know, there's no electricity in it. What could possibly happen? Well, there's still electricity in here. You can't guarantee that there's not electricity in here, and this will get you. There's a ferret in there? How much is that? A ferret's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Were my hair stand straight up? Yeah. My What's that? So a ferret is how many joules? I don't. I mean, we're all talking about crazy things. Okay, about so like it's a lot. Here, I can tell you. But it, I mean, I've, I've sat down and tried to explain this to my students, you know, and read through everything, and I'm just like, you can after, try after the third page, I'm going, yeah, I can't turn that into one sentence that explains what it is. You know, it's a lot. So we want to know about fry bacon or burn bacon? <laughs> Still fry well, bacon. Well, both. Ah. Don't yeah, don't touch. I mean, don't these touch are not necessarily going to kill you. I don't know what I, what I bought here from the school. Burn your arm off. Uh -oh. We're not using the big ones. Oh, here's another thing. You think that the bigger they are, the more dangerous they are? Typically that's true, but they're making these things now very small. So you can get a small one like this that could be one ferret. And it'll get you. Okay. Have you guys have you guys seen these electronic cars? Those electric cars that are going like zero to sixty in like four seconds. You heard about these things? They're amazing. The Tesla motor. You know how they're doing it? Is they're putting an engine or an electric motor on every wheel. So we're used to having one engine in a car, right? That has a drivetrain that goes back to an axle and then turns two wheels. A lot of these electric cars will have motors on every single wheel. And a lot of, and the way that they're able to get them to go from like zero to sixty in no time at all. Okay. Really cool. Um, but yeah, it, it, you know, and your the, the automotive mechanic of tomorrow is gonna to be a completely different or kind of of today, coming today. The automotive mechanics needs a completely different skill set than the auto mechanic of yesterday. It's not oil and grease anymore. It's 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 circuitry, motherboards. Yeah, yeah. But literally, I mean, you know, if you had one of these cars, but you know, we're pretty still pretty far away from getting these devices to be where they need to be. 
you know, again, if, if it was 1958 and we could foresee the and we could foresee the future, and somebody would work in the Tesla car back then, you know, from then now they'd actually have something. But we're maybe have to backtrack a little bit to go for it. And then there's fuel cells, and then there's all sorts of crazy stuff. So it's, it's lots of fun stuff we can have. All right, so we're going to use capacitors. We're going to use these guys. They're brand new. Uh, so somebody's got to open this. And um, uh, these are all 104s. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with everybody having a 104 capacitor or a 0 0.1, uh, a 0 0.1 pico, microfarad, microfarad. So very small. Okay, a 0 0.1 microfarad. We're talking about one of these little things having a full farad. It's just really small, so we're not going to die. I probably shouldn't say this, but I, I, I was recently told when I did this for somebody, did this kind of spiel for someone, they said that there's like a hack out there where you can go hack a camera and make a, um, a taser with the capacitor out of a, a, a camera, a digital camera roll. I am not responsible. That's what I say. I'm like, right? You are not responsible. Yeah, we want to catch. Well, this is a guy that's really in the state. One other thing that I want to ask you about people. One other thing about all electronics is that um, sometimes these things are polarized. Now, what was your name? Nate. Nate was telling a story earlier about how he blew something up because he put it in backwards. He was very proud of himself. So, um, Nate, you'll be happy to know that the resistors that are getting passed around, they don't have polarity, meaning they don't have one side or another that has to go in one direction. But some capacitors do. And the easiest way to tell, uh, it's not always the case, but most of the time when circuitry is polarized, one leg is going to be longer than another. Okay, like you can see, I don't know if you guys can see these, but one leg is longer than another. And the way that I remember it is as I always say, well, the one leg that's longer has more, so that's plus, it has more. So that's the positive side. The leg that's shorter is minus something, so it has less. And then you can actually look on that, and it actually has a little strip on here that has a minus sign where the, the well, it doesn't have a minus sign. <laughs> but whenever they have these little arrows, that, that's the negative side. Okay. That, but now these capacitors that are getting passed around, those little <laughs> ceramic discs, the orange ceramic discs, they're not polarized. The legs are the same size, so it doesn't matter. Okay? If, if it was, and, and we will, so let me point this out to you. Some of you, when we get these working, hopefully we get them working, uh, some of you might want to swap out the capacitor that I gave you and put in a different one, which hopefully we'll get time to do. Just remember that the easiest way to look at a schematic, like my schematic does the same plus or minus for the capacitor. But what you can understand is if you go, well, this leg does come out and go to the negative ass side of our power. So that probably means that the shorter leg of a capacitor goes out here and touches one, where the longer leg goes up and touches two. Okay? That's one of the ways that I read schematics. And somewhere on there, there should be a plus and minus to talk about the direction. All of our solar panels have pluses and minuses. Okay, the last thing I think is our piezo disc. And here is our piezo disc. And this is going to be our speaker. Okay, some of you might have speaker. Some of you will have piezos. We're going to have to play with them, mix and match them. All right. So again, these are positive, negative. The red's going to be positive. The black's going to be negative. And what this is, it's a little ceramic, or it's a quartz disc with a metal, uh, like a, a brass outer ring. Uh, somebody should have one that we can actually see. Is there, is there one? Yeah, I think you can actually see inside it though. Yeah. And you can see it. I want to see one without the plastic though. I'm going to have any other video without the plastic. I thought I dropped one on the table without the plastic. <laughs> no. No. No? All right, well, it's not in the little. Here it is. Here we go. No, no, no. I'm going to borrow this one in here. We'll trade. This one's nice, right? All right. So, here we go. Here's the, here's the piezo disc. You can see that it's got a center that has its little like quartz, kind of a white area. And then the other side is that brass kind of ring. And so this is actually a speaker. So what's going to happen is when you send voltages to this, the uh, quartz disc is going to fluctuate at the rate of the sound. These are really good for making uh, for your cell phones. 
And it was really weird. I just did this demo the other day, and my cell phone went off just as I was talking about it. So it was like, you know, by happenstance. Um, so these are really good for things like cell phones, car alarms, fire alarms, anything that can annoy your teacher. These are really good for. Okay. But they, you can also play audio music over them too. But they don't really sound that great. Right? I mean, obviously, in your cell phone, you don't have a speaker in your cell phone, right? If you did, it would be kind of heavy to carry around. You've got a little, you've got, some of you might even have a really small piezo disc in there. I think the one that you have there is probably a good example of what might be in your cell phone. Okay, minus. I will use white. So I'm starting off here with um, one going over to, uh, well, to be honest, I shouldn't use that. I would take, the first thing I would do to, to simplify, because we need to simplify, let's take, I'm gonna, I'll give it back, I promise. Let's take your capacitor and put it going from two to one. So everybody remembers where two to one is? So it should look something like that. You got it. Does that be in the same row or So you're gonna put it in, so here's what you'll do. So here's one. So you've got these little holes coming off, right? Yeah. So you're going to take your capacitor and put one leg in one and then the other leg in two. And then you're going to take a, uh, I would take one of your hookup wires from one and I would run it off to power on the one side. So I would take uh, I would take one of these and I'd take a hookup wire and run it out to the side of your piece. Just so the side of your board. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Well it would be actually the negative. So I would put it maybe in blue. So if you've got a small board you've got a small board, what I would do is take it from like one, and I would put it up here to like nowhere up at the top. And then I would take the next step, if I'm not going too fast, take the next piece of hookup wire and have it go from two to six. So it's got to go from two over to six. And then if you've got your resistor, put your resistor in between six and seven. Thank 
And then I would take eight and put eight out to the other side power. So if you didn't have, so on yours, I would take eight and put it up to the top of the other side. We've got a small one. Eight. Yep. So four to eight, and then you wire eight to the outside. Yep. Eight to positive? Yep. Is that on the outside of that last one? <laughs> I know, then I thought twice, and I was like, this is so tired. All right, now, some of you have potentiometers that have little legs on them already, okay? Most of you probably don't. That's okay. You all see that we've got these alligator clips out of the table. So take two of these alligator wires. So connect one, connect one to the middle, and then the other one to one of the outside. It doesn't really matter which. Yep. No, that's the speaker. You want to touch on? Doesn't matter which one. Which one? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. All right. 